I hope we are live here. We're going to just check in a second. Um, ah, I am getting a message that we are live. Wonderful. Um, we're just going to wait uh, just one minute to, to, get in, um, to get in line here. Great. We can hear sound and audio. This is really wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful. This is wonderful. All right, let's get started, everybody. Um, first of all, if you're new to CryptoVoxels, um, you can move around with your WASD keys. Um, if you want to jump, you press the space bar, and there is a wonderful feature called flying, um, and you can fly by pressing the F key, and all of a sudden you can survey the entire building um, as it stands, which is great. Um, this building was uh, basically modeled by one of our co-founders, Nate uh, Clapp, no shot, who is standing right to the left of me here. Um, and uh, you guys are one of the first in this area um, on this stream to be able to see it because it's just, um, just been remodeled recently. Before I go into the main uh, part of all of this, I just um, want to do an announcement for Kodame first, and that is... Um, Thanks so much for joining us uh, for the Kodame Art and Tech Festival 2020, uh, which is the 10th annual event. If you're new to Kodame, our mission is to spark visionaries with playful workshops and an inclusive art and tech festival running since 2010. And Kodame does this by celebrating the value of creativity through inspiring experiences like art projects, sales, performances, and installations. And this year's Art and Tech Festival theme is joint representing a global community or opportunity to connect, create, and celebrate. Um, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Sam Brookman. I am the Business Development Manager at Async Art, and it is my pleasure today to show you a little bit of what's happening um, and a few of the exciting artworks that we've had on our platform. Um, to give you a little bit of background, um, Async Art was founded just about nine months ago, and in those nine months, we've seen a, uh, a, so much growth and um, so much expansion, not just in the amount of artists that we've had, but also in the capabilities of the platform. Um, so needless to say, it's been a really exciting journey here. Um, before we before we start, um, I just want to I just want to say that this platform has been um, I've been working at Async for uh, nearly about four or five months now, and my background actually is as a musician, as a performing artist. And when I first started, um, when I first saw Async Art. Um, one of the things that really drew me is the capability and the possibility of what it could be, um, not just to visual art, but to music and the performing arts and so on. And I'm very excited to be a part of this team. Um, and it's been, it's been a really wonderful um, experience so far. So we're, if you'll, um, we're going to go ahead and start by going through these doors. These doors don't open. They just, uh, you just go through them. And um, we're going to look at two parts of um, Async Art. We're going to go through Async Classics, and we're also going to go through the featured pieces. Async Classics just simply means uh, mean that we are uh, looking at artworks that are that were done during the inception, um, and then the featured pieces are sort of the more um, the more recent recent additions um, that we've done. Now, as we just step down here, I just want to say a couple of things, and that is, um, if you're new to async art, let me just explain really quickly what we do. Um, async art is not just a platform; it's a movement. And that movement is about creating programmable art. So if you can imagine um, art that is reactive to weather, to the season, to statistical data, to location, or even geography, um, this is this is what what async art is. It is art that that changes based on um, stimuli, and it is also art that has multiple parts to it. And what we call what we call this is basically layers and a master. A master is what 
Um, every person, uh, it is the masterpiece of the artwork. It is what every person sees as the final result. Layers are little bits and pieces within the artwork that can be changed and customized by the buyer or the owner of that layer. And so we're going to see a lot of um, a lot of examples of this as we move forward. And um, without further ado, let's just get started. We're going to go through Async Classics here, and we're going to look at our first painting here called The First Supper. The First Supper was the first programmable art that Async launched um, in uh, earlier this past year. It is very interesting because it is a synthesis of over 13 different prominent crypto artists, including Josie Bellini, Shortcut, Sparrow, Xcopy, Coldy, and others. And what's interesting about this is that in every artist sort of um, contribution to this, it's almost as if the layers, which are these different characters that you see, um, they they are they're masterpieces of their own, um, and combined together, it's this like very dense, um, very dense painting. But it's something that is that has so much meaning and so much symbolism. Um, it was created really as sort of like a declaration or a constitution of sorts. You can read that constitution on the bottom here. Um, but really, it's, it's about creating a new wave, a new, um, uh, a new way of interpreting and creating artworks that are customizable. Um, it's a new frontier, a new innovative approach to art that has that has never um, been taken before, and so this was the first inception of that work. Um, one other thing that uh, is worth mentioning is that the first supper is is based on the Last Supper, which is the famous painting of Jesus and his disciples. Um, the reason it's called the First Supper is because it is the first artwork on the platform. It is the first one that you know started going uh, that 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 started the movement and and so on and so forth when the when the Async platform launched. Um, the the piece sold for about 103 ether, the master. Um, and what's interesting about it is that prior to this piece, uh, many of the artists, um, you know, when they collaborated, and collaboration is a relatively um, common occurrence in the crypto art space, um, you, you know, you kind of had to just um, agree um, and trust the other artists to get your portion of the payment. Um, Async instituted a smart contract, which is just basically a contract after the sale was after the sale happened, to distribute these works amongst um, amongst all artists automatically, trustlessly, um, and uh, reliably. So this was this was a great um, first dip into that. If we face the back here, we'll we'll see our next piece, which is called Right Place and Right Times, created by Matt Cain in 2020. Um, it's one of the few pieces that the artists actually helped code themselves. And it's also one of the most complex async pieces to date with over 24 different layers um, that update each day, but they update each day separately. So each layer is connected to about one hour of the day and adjusts its look based on the movement in price using a bunch of attributes like scale, rotation, position. Um, so as you'll see, um, you, you see that the, that the photo or the artwork is actually slightly slanted. The Bitcoin symbol is, is also like rotated just a little bit and slanted. Um, these things are all happening on um, one hour of the day based on the price of Bitcoin. And that, that's what makes this piece very interesting because it changes. It's tethered to... Um, to the uh, to the price of Bitcoin. Now there are a lot of there's a lot of stuff that you can dive into with this piece. Um, there are over uh, apparently there are you know 210 prints being distributed currently of the different states of the artwork, um, and uh, you can follow the link in this description right here um, to check out a little bit more information on on all of the goings on um, and and the complexities of this piece, which I find to be absolutely fascinating. But do know that um, you know this piece sold for 100k was the first piece of uh, crypto art that that broke 100k in sales. So uh, very very fascinating stuff. We now move on to uh, Murat Pak's. The tribe. And the tribe is probably um, one of my favorite and most exciting works because um, it is 
um, it, it is there's just so much meaning behind it, and it, it really t- asks this big question of who owns the power of a state. But before I answer that question, I want to give you a few technical details here. The piece has over 60 different layers, 60 customizable areas, and um, it can be customized in one sextillion unique configurations. So um, probably in our lifetime, we won't be able to see all of the different unique configurations, but that's how much this piece is customizable. So as I mentioned, the piece asks um, in a sort of abstract way, like who holds the power of a state? And this is an allegory for the creation of the internet. It's also an allegory a little bit for the Ethereum network, which is, um, which is a network uh, on, on the blockchain. And um, the answer lies within the community. So if you take a look in the center, you see a, a ball sort of looking um, thing. And, and right now it's empty. It doesn't show a face or anything. But generally speaking, um, it would represent the, the sultan. The sultan is the head of the state. And around the sultan, you have a row of skulls here. Um, and the row of skulls are his advisors. The golden skull on the top is named the wazir. The wazir is the most trusted advisor. And around them, you have um, you know, whales or, or people with a lot of wealth, um, merchants, um, actual citizens, guards, city walls, outside influences, and so on and so forth. And um, the way that you answer the question of who holds the power of the state really depends on how the community answers it. So sometimes it's the sultan that has the power of the state. Sometimes it's his closest advisor. Sometimes it's the whales or the, the very wealthy people. Sometimes it's the guards. And, and the, the, the configurations go on and on. But it's very interesting that um, this is what we have found in, in creating these async artworks is that Ultimately, like you create a community out of it that solves questions and is able to interact um, together over it. Very interesting stuff. One of my favorite, favorite pieces here. Moving on, uh, to the left, you will see Osinachi's Choose the Man You Will Become. Choose the Man You Will Become. Um, well, before I start talking about the piece, I, I just want to make sure that I introduce the, the artist. And the artist is um, an African artist that started making uh, artwork in Microsoft Word. And if you can imagine what that looks like, I personally can't. But if you can imagine what that looks like, that's definitely uh, not an easy way to make artwork. But he made it. And this story in particular is... Um, one that speaks very close to me because, you know, this is an example of an artist that has truly um, been transformed by, by blockchain technology. Um, his art has been noticed. He's now represented by galleries. His works are in galleries and owned by many people. And it's a great, um, great thing. So you'll notice that this piece, Choose the Man You Will Become, is based on, it almost looks like uh, sort of the hairstyles that you would find in a barber shop, uh, you know, like those posters where you know you, you you take a look and you're like, oh, what haircut do I want today? And uh, and you get all sorts of different styles. Well, this is this is exactly what that's based on. Except you'll notice a few uh, sort of peculiar details, and those details are you know you have a beard that's blue or hair that's pink or purple or yellow, um, these really bright colored lips, um, and so on and so forth, and. This is all sort of representation of Osinachi about railing against what society uh, wants us to be. Um, and so be coming from sort of an area where, um, you know, he, Osinachi particularly felt like society was telling him what to do all the time and telling him who to be, this was his way of rebelling against that. And um, so, so he has all of these hairstyles and he has all these people but his way of sort of rebelling against it is by choosing these bright colors um, and, and, and sort of like pushing back on that aspect. Um, at the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, the, there are 30 different layers here and every layer is a person. At the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, um, every single person of the 30 was actually blacked out in solidarity with the movement. Um, yet another example of how powerful um, community can be. 
We're, We're going to move, move on, on now, now um, in the interest of time, to our featured pieces and um, sort of look at the first one here, right to our right when we enter the room. Um, the first piece that we see in our featured pieces uh, is called Sovereignty uh, by Micah Johnson. And this is a piece that I'm intimately familiar with. I worked on a little bit of the marketing and um, uh, sort of the, the, the creative strategy with. Um, I think it's a really beautiful message. Micah Johnson, what Micah Johnson has essentially done in this is um, he identified a family. He um, was talking with these two young kids that you see depicted in this photograph, um, Jacques and Raiden, and asked them what they wanted to be when they grew up. And their response was, well, I want to be a, an astronaut, but I don't, as a black person, I don't think I'm um, smart enough to be. And so um, Micah's response was this, was this artwork. Here's how it works. Um, every year on each boy's respective birthday, um, the painting gets grayed out, and what you see is two main items. On the left, you see what Jacques and Raiden respectively want to be when they grow up. So Jacques wants to be an astronaut, Jacques wants to be a scientist, Jacques wants to be an engineer, etc., etc. And then on the right, you have a QR code, and that QR code leads to a wallet where people can contribute funds um, to these kids so that when they're 18, their wallets get dispensed to them. And actually, what, what also ends up happening is that the kids disappear forever from that painting. Now, some of the other interesting features about this painting is that the door, which represents like a door of opportunity for those kids, every year for the next 11 years is going to open ever so slightly. And the astronaut, which symbolizes their dreams, um, has is, is a layer, so you can actually take the helmet off the astronaut. Now, fun fact, um, this astronaut suit has been used in multiple uh, Hollywood movies, um, and, uh, and, and including this photo shoot, so uh, really, really fascinating stuff. But the reason that, that this artwork is called Sovereignty is precisely because Micah is trying to present um, an independent solution to an ongoing problem of inequity and inequality um, in the world. And so um, this is, this is his, his um, independent solution. Fund these kids, give them an, an opportunity um, in their, you know, give them an opportunity to be successful and they will be. And so we're very much looking forward to keeping in contact and seeing how this, um, how this painting evolves and how these kids grow up um, and become successful. So. Really great, really great artwork there. On our left here, um, you'll notice a square painting called Beautiful Worlds by Yura Miron. This painting is fascinating. Um, we always at Async talk about masters and layers. We talk about these customizable aspects. But from the perspective of Async art, the possibilities are endless. They're all different. They're all unique. And beautiful worlds is one of those um, one of those aspects that is really powerful and interesting and different. Here's how it works. Beautiful worlds has 365 unique layers attached to it. It cannot be changed by anyone. It changes automatically every day. And um, what that does is it it. You know, the, it's one single master that changes based on um, at the same time every day. And so one of the things that um, is unique about this work and that's worth mentioning is that it really is a brilliant example for why digital art should be hung up at home. Because you there's this essence of surprise and wonder every day when you wake up. And I guarantee, you know, like it, even in two years or three years, you – these images change every day, so you won't be able to remember everything, you know, every image that, that is shown every day. Um, and so it, it's, it's almost like the gift that keeps on giving in the sense that there's always something new to notice, always something new to see, um, and, and really, really wonderful, um, really wonderful uh, programmable art. It's simple, it's powerful, it's elegant, um, it's Beautiful Worlds by Yura Miron. We'll turn to our right here, 
And we'll see uh, Eath Boy by Trevor Jones and a lot of money. This is something that is hot off the press. We had this uh, auction just a couple of weeks ago. Um, really wonderful auction, was really successful. Um, and what the way the piece that is – well, let me, let me w walk backwards a little bit. Um, Eath Boy is – a synthesis of digital and physical art. So Trevor Jones is actually like primarily known for his um, his physical artworks, um, and a lot of money is really known for his digital. And so if you look at this painting, you can actually see where the um, where the physical painting aspects were and where the digital ones were. Now here's here's the interesting part about all this: the piece reacts to the price of ether. What does that mean? That means that the background of this piece is about 10 times as big as the original. And as the price of ether goes up or down, so does the painting, the painting aligns. So when the price of ether drops very low, then the painting reflects that and we're like in the depths of hell. And when uh, the, the price of ether, which uh, I believe is growing today, it's at 623 as, as far as I can see right now, um, then the painting goes higher and it goes into the sky and into space and so on and so forth. And so in that way, it's tethered to the price of Bitcoin. Um, some other, some other uh, interesting stuff about this is that it's um, Vitalik, who is the person represented on this artwork, has a subtle smile um, that changes every day. It's very, very subtle. Um, and um, that's also based on the price of ether. You'll notice that on his right, our right arm, you have a butterfly. And um, we, <laughs> at ASIC, we, we call it the Bitcoin butterfly because um, the, position, the position of the butterfly actually tracks uh, the price of Bitcoin. So actually, when I was looking at it two days ago, it was on his left arm and now it's on his right, which is, um, which is really interesting. Um, finally, there's one layer uh, to this piece, and it's called an accessories layer. That layer is actually only accessible t to Vitalik Buterin um, himself, um, and he's the creator of Ethereum. That, that, um, th that accessory is different sort of masks and glasses that you can put on his face. But if you ever see this painting, and you see that the glasses, that, that all of a sudden he's wearing glasses or a mask or any sort of other accessory on his face, then you'll know that Vitalik was the person that did it because he is the sole owner of that layer. So very, um, very interesting. Let's move on. Um, and we'll move on to the right, right here, um, to a piece called Regalia by Fabien Rashid. Now, Fabien Rashid is sort of known um, to us in our community as the person who loves to experiment with all of these different, um, all of these different aspects of tech. And I love the fact that Fabien plays with these different, um, these tech elements to create art. And in the case of Regalia, um, is it uses a subgraph to actually build artwork. So if you look at this, if you look at this painting, and you look right below, um, there is an interactive component that you can click on, um, and you can take a look at it. <clears throat> you can basically take a look at it, and you can make art from it. Regalia is is a piece that essentially gives the um, the different. Um, aspects of the link that you see um, into practice. So, so what does that mean? That means that Regalia has several different layers and the owners of those layers get to choose, for example, what color, what shapes, what lines are drawn in the interactive component. And so in that way, um, Fabien Rashid was actually one of the first to tap into this. It takes the subgraph um, data and it builds a unique artwork out of it based on what the, the layer owners do. So in essence, to sum it up, um, Regalia is an artwork in and of itself, but it's also basically like a cartographer's map about how you can draw and how you can create art on the interactive component. Please do take a look at that link. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, it's a really, really fascinating, fascinating artwork, uh, really fascinating use case for async art. Moving on now, we're going to cross
And we'll, we will see Phase Space number one, Spiral Riders by T.S. Moreau. What I love about T.S. Moreau is the fact that um, you have this comic strip. And this comic strip is customizable. Um, it's customizable in so many different ways. Um, you can change the characters. You can change the, the items that they're looking for. You can even change the words that they're saying. And so um, in this way, Face Space number one, it ultimately is a comic strip that is controlled by its layer owners. And we've we've actually, you know, several of our several of our um, several of the layer owners, including one of our co-founders, Conlin Rios. Um, wrote articles about the fact that he it almost feels like a responsibility as a layer owner to react to the to the different changes of the comic um, of the comic piece so I invite you to you know if you click on the artwork here then you can actually read through the story and see um, phase space number one by T.S. Moreau um, and, and and you can see like what aspects can change if you go on the async website. You can see all the different states and all the different words that can possibly be said. Now, um, one thing that is interesting um, and something to note is that um, T. S. Moreau has actually um, submitted all of his materials for a second comic strip that continues this story. Submitted actually last night, I believe, and it should be minted on the async art platform within the next couple of days. And if that's the case, um, please do come and visit, read phase space number one, and come back for phase space number two. Our final, um, our final piece here that we're going to touch on is actually um, a classic, and if I can just find it, um, I don't see it here. Ah, it's right here. It's right behind. Um, and it is The Creation by um, Fabien Rashid and several other artists. What's interesting about this piece is, and I love that we're sort of ending and rounding out the program um, with this piece because I think that, um, because it is a collaboration, it is the first collaboration with Kodame. Um, and the creation takes this very um, novel concept, this classic concept of like God and um, a hand touching God, um, that famous painting that you that you that we all are are familiar with and love, and it and it takes a spin on that, and it creates it gives it this like crypto art digital look. So um, this was sort of a way of the artist saying that. Even we, we can present a classic idea, but we can put a spin on it to make it uh, to make it in the style of what crypto art and and digital art can be and what it can do. And so you have all of these different layers that sort of signify different um, different styles and different um, collaborative efforts between the many artists of their interpretation of what what the classic painting is. Um, it it is. Um, it, it, it is a remix classical piece, um, and we made sure to. Um, it, it is sort of based on this glitch art. Um, it, what, they all artists wanted to sort of make it look more techy, and actually there was a T-shirt made out of it, and it was um, in direct collaboration with Kodame. So if you want to read more about that coll collaboration with Kodame, take a look at the link right there. Um, it has a line, uh, and also take a look at the artwork itself. So with all that being said, um, that sort of concludes our um, tour in the gallery per se. But what I, I just do want to, I just do want to make sure that you are aware that um, there are very many artworks in this gallery that have a lot of really interesting meaning. You know, you can take a look at the Hack Kitties collaboration with Hackatow. I encourage you to also take a look at um, Block Twenty One with Robert Alice. Block Twenty One sold for over um, twenty one hundred and twenty thousand dollars at Christie's this past fall. We're very proud of that. Um, Jeff Davis just minted View Program uh, literally about a day or two ago, which is worth looking at. I think it's still on sale. Um, and um, let me just, uh, if, if we go into the Async Classics, another one to look at would be the Kunigan Dilemma by A Lot of Money and Unlimited by Josie Bellini. Um, these are all artworks that I encourage you to sort of stay, stick around and read about. 
and um, sort of uh, get more familiarized with because they're all artworks that are really, really amazing, really um, beautifully done and have a lot of interesting and poignant uh, message, messages in them. At this point, um, I'm, I'm going to leave a little bit of time for people to ask questions. Now, we have several people, um, uh, several team members in the stream chat. Um, so if I can't answer a question, they certainly can. But at this point, I'd love to open this up um, for any sort of questions that you might have for async or for any of the artworks that we've uh, that we've basically gone through at this point. And we'll leave questions for about uh, maybe seven, eight minutes or so um, before we wrap this up. So if you have any questions, type them in the chat right now and we'll see if we can get them answered. Thank you, Kodame, for having us. Um, it's been really great. It's really wonderful to be able to show um, show off the pieces that we have and um, what what the capabilities of the async art platform are. I'm getting a question here, and that question is, what kind of interactions are possible on the platform? Um, there are there are endless possibilities, as I mentioned before, of interactions that are possible as an artist on the platform. What do I mean by that? I mean, again, we, we go back to this idea that programmable art can be um, basically customized and um, it can change over time. So, you know, you have these pieces like ETH Boy that can react to um, the price of Ether. Um, you have these other pieces that actually give the audience um, the ability to... Um, create artwork from set data, which is regalia by um, Fabien Rashid. You have in, uh, interactions like people, um, you have interactions like people can um, change the time of day or they can change a layer based on the time of day. Um, the Crystal Clam by Goldweird is one of those examples where people can actually change um, the the amount of pearls on the crystal clam um, based on their the time of day that they're looking at. So the interactions on the platform are basically like there's there's infinite possibilities here. Um, whether it's you know night changing based on the time of day, changing based on the weather, changing based on statistical data, and so on. Um, the possibilities are basically endless. I'm getting another question that asks what kind of uh, I'm sorry. Do you have regular tours? Um, and where do people buy programmable art? So to answer the, that question, people buy programmable art on async.art. And many, uh, if you click on the, uh, on the paintings here, there will be a link that leads you directly to our gallery where you can take a look um, at the different... Um, the different pieces that we have currently. Um, but uh, thank you to Kodame and Conlin for putting out the link as well in the chat. And um, to answer your question about do we have regular tours, um, at this current moment we don't, but uh, it sounds to me like we should probably, um, and we should probably do some sort of event like this. So I will certainly circle back with the team, um, and maybe we can make this of uh, maybe we can make this something that's on a monthly basis, or so on and so forth. Another question: um, What format would I get if I purchase a piece of programmable art? Um, the, the answer to that question is: um, You would get it in the form of a token, um, ERC. Uh, Conlin can sort of uh, answer that question on the technical side, but you would get it as a token. Um, and that token would have an embedded JPEG or PNG um, file that you could basically um, show on an Apple TV. You can show it on, um, there, there are more and more platforms that you can show it on. You can show it, we're, we're cre currently creating an app um, that where you can show it on your computer, um, but you can basically show it on anything um, you can show it on a gallery. You can show it on an Apple TV app. You can show it um, on on other on, on your computer, and so on and so forth. So um, that's really great. Um, Z Caterpillar is asking, where do I get free wine during show openings? It's a great, great, uh, great 
answer or a great question rather z caterpillar um uh you'll have to ask my virtual bartender uh we'll make sure to have one next time um great z caterpillar is asking which mainstream fairs and galleries do you show in the real world um the answer to that question is that we have several um people actually showing um this this artwork in different places uh in, in particular, uh, one piece that we talked about, Micah Johnson's Sovereignty, is, um, is currently being shown in Los Angeles. Uh, I don't remember the exact hotel, but I think it's the Marriott or maybe the Hyatt in, in downtown LA, and it's on this huge billboard that's being shown um, in the center. Colin can, can or one, one of the other team members can provide sort of the specifics on that. Uh, it is the Marriott. Yeah, it is the Marriott. Thank you, Colin, for that correction. Um, but beyond that, we, we have several um, we have several pieces that have um, that have been minted on our platform that are being shown in different galleries like Osinachi. Um, Osinachi's Choose the Man You Will Become is currently at Kate Vass Gallery um, or Kate Voss Gallery um, and, and, and several other platforms um, and so forth. Any other questions? Any other questions? Great folks. Well, this is exactly right on time with what I was thinking um, in, in terms of our timeline. Listen, um, we have a Discord. Async has a Discord. Async also has a YouTube channel, and it has a website. So async.art is our website, um, and you'll find all of our Discord information, our YouTube, our Twitter, um, on that stuff. So make sure that you tune in and follow us. We'd love to be able to say hello to you. We'd love to be able to get to know you more. Um, we want to be able to hear your feedback and, and what, what artworks you think are the most interesting and the ones that have been shown today. Um, um, so we invite you, we invite you to come join our community because we believe in this so much and we want other people to learn about it. We want other people to experience the technology and other people to, um, to, to fall in love with what we passionately feel about, feel about and what we passionately, passionately love. So um, make sure to make yourself known um, on our Discord, on our email, on our YouTube. Um, we have a periodic um async artist interviews as well, um, which you can follow. So make sure, um, uh, make sure to, to tune in at that point. And, um, we really, uh, thank you again to Kodame, um, or Kodame for having us today. And, um, we will see you soon. So thanks again. My name is Sam Brookman. Feel free to reach out to me personally. I am the business development manager at Async Art. And today it has been a pleasure to uh, give you a tour of our latest gallery with all of the artworks. Thank you so much. Talk soon.